Hello! On this channel you will see how I develop web applications. My name is Anton and I do web development with Svelte, Postgres, Node.js and well many other stuff. It depends on the app. So do not waste your time. I suggest let's skip straight to the app. But before some short disclaimer. I do it all in like almost real time. Like I try to do as minimum cuts and edits as possible. So all you will see will be like real, how I do it in real life as a full-time web developer. So you can expect some, well, I can say weird stuff, I can make mistakes, uh, the code cannot work, but we will fix it all and you will learn how you can do it too. So, okay, let's switch to what we are going to do today. So uh, first let tell me what pain I have and how I want to solve it. So this is my browser. I have a lot of tabs. Usually it's much more tabs or many more tabs open than this one. And uh, it's to be honest, it's a mess. I tried bookmarks. I tried different applications and uh, well, extensions for Chrome. I tried to use Toby, but mostly I just dump stuff there and that's it. So I decided what about I just build some simple app where I store my URLs. It can be uh, articles, it can be videos. So basically some links to content that I want to read. I usually most uh, mostly use it for learning. So yeah, I have a lot of, you know, developer documentations, videos to, to tutorials, etc., etc. So let me close all of this quickly. Oh yeah, it's quite a plenty. Okay, our special guest will be ChatGPT, also GitHub Copilot, and some AI tools that, well, make me a better developer and probably you. Okay, cool. So here I have some notes. So this is draft name tabs manager and uh, blah 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 the purpose the solution so I expect it to save URL into some cloud storage some database where all the clients like web app mobile app extension will sync from so except from URL I want there to be some status is it a new URL is it some opened one in like in progress done some organization with folders tags and maybe some stars or likes etc so let's uh, figure out how will it work from technical perspective and what we are going to use so on the front end front end is first because this is what users see i'm going to use swelt and actually swelt kit part of it on the back end, oh uh, yeah, so thank you GitHub Copilot. Almost like this, but I'd like to use WebSockets. Yeah, Postgres will be a database. So WebSockets, why WebSockets? Why not TRPC or REST API or GraphQL? First of all, I want to have fun with it. I used it a little bit and I like it. But for this particular app, I want all the clients to be in sync in real time. You know, like you can do Firebase with Superbase. Um, but I don't want to do some vendor locking. You know, when you are locked with Firebase and you cannot get rid of it, it's kind of painful. I was there already multiple times. Yeah, so we'll do it all real time stuff ourselves. And uh, yeah, you, you will see how it will be useful. So for the ORM, we are going to use Prisma. And for authentication, I was to use uh, a new library, maybe not very new, called Lucia. So um, let me quickly open its uh, documentation, its website. So I'll quickly show you 
through the documentation of what it does and why we are going to use it. Yeah, so you basically install it with npm as usual and then you can create user like this, you can get session, you can save session to cookie. You can use cookie, you can use GWT to, you know, send your session ID. It depends. In WebSockets, we'll start simple and we'll just, you know, send session ID through WebSocket message and save it somewhere on the client, like in local storage. And later on, we'll work on refactoring the code, make it, uh, you know, better, improve security. So we'll see. Okay, so this is how you would create a user and session for it. Uh, and this is probably installation page. So Lucia has the core of it and it also has adapters. So one of the adapters is for Prisma. So adapter is like where it will store the data, user, session and keys. Yeah, we, we need to talk about keys a little bit. So it will take our Prisma client as adapter and uh, yep, that will do it. So for users, the only required field is ID. Uh, you can add your own uh, fields for the user, like name, email, etc. And um, so there is also a session that you create for, you know, every, every client application. For example, one session for your web browser, one session for your mobile app, one session for, for extension. Something like that. So, and you can use different providers, not just login and password or email and password. You can also extend it with OAuth providers like GitHub, Google, Facebook, etc. Uh, but the basic one is just password. That's one we will start with. Okay, so here you can see pieces of code, how to do this and all that create user with different attributes, for example, how to get a user by ID or by session, etc. So it's pretty simple. The code you can see here is quite nice. Okay, so this is Lucia, but we will start with Svelte. Okay, so let me, yeah, let me see. So I think that's, that's all. Lucia is a new guy in the town, but Prisma, not just SwelteKit, I kinda already been here for quite a while. So, uh, I suggest we start with basic, we need to create a folder for the app. So I use WebStorm, you can use uh, VS Code, or whatever IDE you like. So let me create a new project, so let's call it Tabs manager. Okay, this, for now it's empty. So let me open my terminal, pin it to the right. This is what I find it like more comfortable. Okay, and I'm going to use pnpm to scaffold it up. So pnpm install. Oh, sorry, init. That would init the application, the, the package JSON, where we can write all the dependencies. But actually, I think I forgot one thing. So let's go to SvelteKit um, page. And uh, I want to check how they create the project because probably they, yeah, they use npm create and that might be different from pnpm. Okay, so, by the way, I never used pnpm create. Is it possible? Let's check it out. I guess I need to jump one folder up and from here, so pnpm create Svelte latest and it will be tabs manager. While we're doing it, let's go to coffee. Okay, so Svelte um, setup, 
script asks us how we want to see the app, like demo app with some components already there, or skeleton project that is like empty application or library. Well, it's not a library, so what we need is skeleton. And we're going to use TypeScript. And LinkedIn is yes. And for tiers, yes. Like we will do all the best practices, but try to move quickly at the same time. Okay, we test. Wonderful. Okay, let's jump in. Let's install dependencies with pnpm. I will do commit, uh, git stuff later, like git add, git commit, etc. Okay, installation is quite quick with pnpm, I love it. So let's see what we've got. In our files tree, we have swelled source and roots. This is where our components and navigation, the router will live. Okay, nice. The rest is like some assets, like images, tests, and some configuration files. This is good. Okay, so if we run pnpm dev, that will launch the local server. Okay, nice. Let's see, might be it will be better if I set it like this. Yeah, we definitely don't need terminal all the time. Okay, let's see if it updates the page in real time. So, hello, world. Nice. Okay, it works. So, um, we need some layout for the app. So, first of all, we're going to have some landing page that will work a little bit later. But once user wants to proceed with the app, like create an account or sign into existing one, uh, they they will need some yeah authentication pages. So uh, let's see. I'll quickly create a folder structure here. So first some directory. In Swelt Kit we can use this uh, round brackets as a folder that won't be part of the root part of URL, but it will be useful for, uh, you know, grouping some roads together. So here I want to create sign up and uh, sign in. No, this is a file. Sign in. Okay, so I will copy this page swelled file into each of them. And okay, this should say sign in. This should say sign up. And this should have some links like sign in, sign in. Okay, and the same for sign up. And let's see if it works. So sign in, click back, sign up, click back. Wonderful. Okay, so we need some styling. So I prefer prettier, oh, sorry, prettier, tailwind. So, and let's go to tailwind. And actually they have, uh, yeah, installation for swell kit. Nice. So we need these things. Okay, I will open, yeah, I think if we do it, the ID on the left, I think I need to move it to the bottom, the terminal. Okay, so this is like the server terminal tab. This is just terminal where I will run comments. I think my face is kind of in place a little bit. Okay, so pnpm add the list of dependencies and then we will initiate tailwind config with tailwind CLI using 
p n p x command. Okay. Uh, by the way, please in the comment section leave me a feedback. Am I talking too fast? I, I guess I do a little bit, or maybe some other feedback like my video is messy or something like maybe audio quality is not that good. I can work on that. Okay, meanwhile, the tailwind seems to be configured. And uh, let's see. So, swelled config, let's check that. I think it is already done. So yeah, we have swelled um, preprocess here. Oh, this is what we need to add. So to tailwind config, we need to define files where tailwind can find our uh, well, our source code, because it parses list of, uh, you know, class names uh, to tree shake. So this is where it can find it. Okay, wonderful. And I think a few last steps is to add app CSS file. App CSS. Nice. And we'll create layout in the root of our roots layout swelled okay and let's copy this so let me stop here for a second and tell what happens here for those who didn't use tailwind with swelled i'll explain so first is layout in the root of roads folder will work for the whole application. So, and here we import the app CSS that contains all the Tailwind stuff. So basically we're saying for the whole application, whatever page it is, we want Tailwind classes. That's it. And the slot is a special swelled uh, component or directive that will put all the uh, nested roads inside of it. So for example, the sign in sign up will go inside of this place instead of it. Okay, so we can add these classes to our hello world and we'll see how it works. Nice, seems to be working. Okay, that was tailwind. Uh, one more thing that I want to use for this project to move quickly is a Daisy UI library. So it's a nice library. It's like Bootstrap, but on top of Tailwind. And uh, yeah, let's quickly install it. So it's also a dev dependency. They don't tell it here, but actually it is. And uh, we need to add it to Tailwind config as a plugin. Okay. And now let's go back and let's try to use some component. Uh, well, I guess we need a nav bar. Do they have it? Yep, here it is. Okay, very nice. Okay, this button does nothing. I think we will just start with this basic one. So I'll copy CSS for it. And we'll go to our layout. And this slot will move, I think, nearby or inside. Yeah, I think it should be near, just nearby. Okay, let's see how it works. Okay, we got some navbar. Seems to be working. I think we need to work on some background color because right now navbar and the background of the page is kind of the same. Yep, okay. So here we'll replace it with tab manager. And uh, let's um, make our sign in, sign up pages here. Sign in and sign up. I mean, not pages, but links 
to those pages. Okay, let's see if it works. Previously we used these two and they should still work. Now we can use these two and they also work. We need to make this one as a full um, link to the root. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so this has been already 20 minutes. Let's overview what we've done from our to-do list. So we've scaffolded the front-end application with SwelveKit. We got Tailwind and Daisy UI installed and uh, it seems to be working, which is good. Um, let's see what we'll do next. So next we will, well, I guess before we jump to backend, let's create some simple UI. Uh, we'll do authentication last. First, let's do to do, oh, sorry, not to do, but actually link saving to the backend. So, and UI, I mean UI for it. Okay, that's what we will work in the next video. Please continue, it should be somewhere here or here. Oh, wait, how do they do it? Oh, here or here. Yeah, see you soon. Ah, here is a button.